So hey, hi, uh, thanks, thanks, Sandy, thanks for joining in today. Uh, so I welcome you to the Web3 Wisdom podcast about the Web Scrunch. Glad to have you. Uh, you are one of the inspiring personalities that I have come across in this space. And uh, I, I wish you inspire a lot more Vijays and a lot more Web3 folks, not just in Web3, but then in, in, in the broader space in Web2 as well. So yeah. Pleasure, welcome well, you. Thank you so much for uh, for having me here, VJ. There's no place I'd rather be than chatting with you. We've had a couple of, I think, great conversations. And Truth and Advertising Unstoppable is a great partner of BitCrunch as well. And uh, we love all the great work you guys are doing with the Web3 industry. So thank you for that. Yep, absolutely. Honored to have you here. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a a great couple of episodes that we are on a roll right now and then glad to have you as one of the earliest uh, in the show so first up i, I would like to uh, see what are the challenges that you faced early on in the web3 journey because everybody talks about challenges especially in this beer market i mean i shouldn't say beer market anymore because of what <laughs> is happening with the market right now but what are the challenges uh, you have come across or you have been through at the early stages of your Web3 career? Well, I think um, the first one came when I first started diving into the area. Um, I started looking at blockchain when I was still at Amazon Web Services and watching how our customers, Web2 customers, were using blockchain. Um, and then I started noticing all these Web3 use cases. So I started going down the rabbit hole and Web3, and the very first challenge I came upon were all these new words. It's like a whole new language, right? Just like I had to learn French or Spanish, I felt like I had to learn Web3 um, as well. And I think that was the, the very first challenge was just understanding all the words, like trustless, like who wants to be trustless or minting, like what is minting? Um, there was just a lot, a lot to learn. And I find that that is still a barrier today to new people joining the space. I think the second one was just learning how to operate safely. Um, I view myself as very technical, uh, but I did get rugged. I lost, you know, I didn't lose a lot of money, but I did lose some money. Um, okay. Everybody said it's kind of like the rite of passage coming into Web3. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was one of the first challenges. I was like, why is this a rite of passage? It shouldn't be a rite of passage that you have to get rugged to come into Web3 or get tricked or get spammed. Um, that was really the second thing that I saw. And then the third thing that I think still remains a challenge today is the mission and the values of Web3 are so powerful. But how do we get widespread adoption? Um, you know, we started on this mission that utility is greater than hype. The more utility we can bring to people, the more use. Like they don't really care if it's Web3 or Web2 or Web whatever, but they care about the value. And so mm -hmm. I, we started an uh, Unstoppables journey really focusing on that utility more than, mm -hmm. oh, we're Web3 or we're not Web2, more focused mm -hmm. on what is the value that we can bring to our customers. That's awesome. I mean, getting rugged uh, is is <laughs> has become a common thing, right, in this space. And in fact, I got rugged in my first cycle. And usually, there is a saying where people used to say, "In the first cycle, you get rugged, you lose a lot of money, and then in the second cycle, you get smarter, and in the third cycle, you 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 become much more smart, and then you 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 cross the line, right? Are you are you too in in sync with that uh, thought, or is it just bullshit? Oh, I think it's true. I do think it's true. I mean, I've gotten much smarter now. Um, and now we also have tools. We just partnered up with a company called Webacy, you know, that helps mm -hmm. protect your wallet and flag things that maybe you haven't even learned yet. We love, mm -hmm. we love security elements like that. And VJ, the other thing that I've made it my mission is, especially as I'm working with our Unstoppable Women of Web3, is to train mm -hmm. others so they don't have to get rugged, so that they know what to do and what not to do as much as possible, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't like that reputation for Web3. I don't like the, mm -hmm. oh, you have to go through and get rugged. I don't think that's mm -hmm. cool. Um, I don't think that yields widespread adoption. So I would really like to change that, that brand image of Web3 and make mm -hmm. it more mm -hmm. user-friendly and accepted and inclusive and not, oh, you're going to definitely get rugged. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 totally 
True, uh, and a great mission uh, to to educate people in many ways. I have seen you uh, educate people a lot through your podcast, through your Twitter Spaces. I have uh, had the honor of meeting you a couple of times in this journey. So, what exactly is Unstoppable Domains? I mean, we have we have spilled that uh, brand name a couple of times here in this pod. So, what what exactly is Unstoppable Domains? Because there are a lot of Web two audience who are watching this pod. So. Could you please simplify it in, in simple terms? Mm -hmm. What do you say? So um, Unstoppable Domain, in its very simplest terms, is a digital identity platform. It's a way that you create an identity about yourself, that you own the data. And the reason that it's Web3 is that in Web2, data is owned by a platform. But in Web3, data is owned by an individual. And so this digital identity that you have is yours. You own the data. So for example, today you may log into, let's say Google or TikTok or X or Meta. And when you do that, that username and password that you log in with is considered your identity, but you don't own that, nor do you own the data. And we've seen lots of recent examples of this where, you know, that's been proven, right? Um, but in, in our world, with a digital identity, you own that identity. Uh, it's represented by your domain. And so that's like the simplest way that I would describe what Unstoppable is. Well, that's that's so good, right? I mean, you, you keep one identity and you can carry that across multiple handles or multiple platforms, right? I mean, how does that look like? Because nowadays, as an individual, you get to... Uh, use a lot of different social handles like you have twitter you have linkedin you have facebook and then whatnot and when you think that you have an identity which you can you could probably use it in the future across multiple platforms that sounds really cool right so that's that's really good so what are the what are the common misconceptions about uh let's say the three domains or or nfts in particular what people think and then what do you think that they are, they are they're totally wrong? So is there any misconceptions out there? So I think a lot of people view um, a Web2 domain and a Web3 domain being the same thing. And mm -hmm. there are similarities, right? As a Web2 domain, um, you do get access to your own website, right? So if I have yes. sandy.com, I can put up my own website and display that. But typically in Web2, those domains are owned by companies, right? So if you, you don't usually think about a sandy.com, you think about an amazon.com or a microsoft.com. Um, in Web3, the domains are truly individually based. And so each person has their digital identity. And so it's a little different between the two. You still can use it for a website, decentralized website. Um, but there's so many more uses for a Web3 domain today if you've got a Web2 domain that hasn't been Web3 enabled. Um, and so that's probably the biggest misconception is people will say, oh, you're GoDaddy for Web3. And I'll be like, mm. well, kind of, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, so Because Web3 domain does do so much more. Yep, that's that's totally true, right? And and. Uh... Talking about these uh, Web3 domains, so could you throw us some stats on, on what have you done so far in this, in this? I, I wouldn't call it a long journey, I would say a short journey, because I know I personally know the stats, I know the stats, I have personally worked with your team, but it would blow off uh, the audience, so yeah, please. Yeah, so we have today, we have 3.9 million digital identities out in the wild or domains out in the wild. We are the largest Web3 digital identity or domain platform in the market today. We have over 650 integrations and a thousand partners. That means that provides utility. Each of those partners brings something different, right? Like BitCrunch brings a valuation or Webacy brings security or Skiff brings um, encrypted email. So each of those partnerships brings something different to you. Um, another stat, you may not know this one, but I really like this one. Our first use case was really around the ability to use your domain as a crypto wallet address, right? So you don't have to type in all 21 mm -hmm. letters and characters. Um, it's mm -hmm. still our number one use case today. And 
we do 30 million resolutions every week. Wow. 30 wow. million a week. Oh my God. Even in That's the amazing. even in the in the bear market that we have today. Yeah, wow. 30 million a week. Um, and so we do track a lot of data. We're we are looking for uses. We just released a new use case called mm -hmm. messaging. Uh, we mm -hmm. did that with push protocol out of India and XMTP mm -hmm. out of Austin, Texas. Oh, and uh, that yeah. gives you the ability to message anybody with an unstoppable domain. So 3.9 million, anybody mm -hmm. with a Coinbase wallet and anybody with a mm -hmm. lens protocol uh, profile. Mm -hmm. So we believe that will also increase usage as well. Again, we're getting trying to figure out what is the right use case to get people to try this out. Oh my God, that's that's very impressive. I mean, 3.9, almost 4 million domains that got sold. And seriously, kudos, hats off to the team. And just for the users to know, uh, they all know UnleashNFTs.com in a way because they associate with Bitscrunch. And we have integrated unstoppable domains in the platform as well, where uh, if you have a domain, Web3 domain from unstoppable uh, domains, you see it there right up there at the top as soon as you connect your wallet. So with that, I, I move on to the next section because I, I uh, going back to the education part, I have seen you talk n number of times in spaces. You even went uh, to an extreme where you did a spaces for 24 hours, right? How did you come up with an idea, that idea, and, and how did it went? How did it go? So we wanted to do education for women. On International Women's Day, we decided to do a Twitter space that would last 24 hours. Um, and the idea really came up. I'm the founder of Unstoppable Women of Web3, and our mission is to educate as many women as we could. So we wanted to announce what we were doing and come out with a big bang. And we wanted to do it globally, right? I mean, I know a lot of people think that the U.S. is the world, but it's not. There's so many other people across the globe. And so, you know, 24 hours means that we could touch India. We could touch Australia. We could touch Africa. We could touch Europe. I mean, we could touch the, the entire globe. And so it was a lot of work. I have to say, VJ, we lined up topics. We did panels. Um, of course, I didn't sleep for 24 hours. I was on for the whole 24, um, but it was fabulous. I mean, we had thousands and thousands. I think we had over 24,000 listeners on that and on the entire viewing of that um, or listening of that particular Twitter space. So it was a phenomenal thing that we did to really kick off our unstoppable women of Web3. Mm -hmm. Again, I mean, you keep throwing at <laughs> numbers at us, which is mind boggling. And then kudos again to the team for whoever who, who has been behind that show. Oh, and yeah. So sure. inspiring to see you go through the entire uh, 24 hours route, right? I mean, some people, they just start something and then they come back to finish that thing, right? But but you never did that. You, you basically went on, on and on for the the entire 24 hours so impressive so uh, you did such a massive opening for women for the for the women's day to educate women and other people in the space so what else is coming at unstoppable domains what what is what are the interesting updates that are, are probably popping out uh sometime in the in the near future any any clues for us <laughs> Yeah, so something really interesting is that um, because of the, you know, we're the largest domain or digital identity platform in the Web3 space, and we've recently announced that we're going to be a one-stop shop. We started selling .eth on our site. We've also mm -hmm. announced that we're going to sell .sats on our site. So essentially, you could get any Web3 domain or mm -hmm. almost any on our site. That's our, our vision. But then we started thinking about it and our customers, you know, we like to work backwards from our customers. Our customers started saying, well, what about mm -hmm. Web2? Can you become a, a one-stop shop for Web2? So Unstoppable is also entering the .com namespace as well. Uh, yeah, you will become not only uh, the largest seller of Web3 domains, but we'll be also offering .com registrations. So customers mm -hmm. will now be able to purchase the most iconic traditional 
top level domain name alongside of their Web3 address. And our vision is that over time, um, we want to provide all of the of the features that are currently available for a Web3 domain to mm -hmm. those .com domains. So imagine that. That's not an initial announcement, but over time, we want to provide those features and functions to a .com provider. And so this is all part of our mission to get widespread adoption for Web3 and to showcase mm -hmm. value without continuing just to say, try Web3, let's go Web3, to mm -hmm. try to bring in the rest of the world into the space as well. I mean, this is massive. I mean, bringing Web2 and Web3 bird together is is what we need, right? I mean, this, that is what the doctors order uh, in a way. Because more and more Web2 people, more and more Web2 institutions flock into Web3, we need to have bridges like these, right? I mean, unstoppable domains has the potential not just to sell Web3 domains. And, and now that you're opening up to Web2, it's a massive news. And, and I'm really glad that you got a chance to open it up in our podcast. Uh, I hope the news goes out uh, uh, as soon as possible. So I'm, I'm really excited. I, I really wish I have a lot of Web3 domains from Unstoppable Domains, just for information, we have got bitscrunch.nft uh, as well apart from unstoppable domain so uh, get ready guys uh, we have a lot more in store uh, other than web3 domain so it's it's going to be a one stop shop one stop solution like sandy said so i I'm, I'm sure you you might have uh, gone through the craze of ai artificial intelligence in recent times because that has been the talk of the town right so what what exactly uh, do you think it's a synergy between AI and unstoppable domains? Is there a synergy between those domains and AI? Do you foresee any potential synergies with AI on unstoppable domains? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, Vijay, it's it's very interesting. I was just at um, Fortune's Most Powerful Women Conference, and I mentioned at that conference that I had started working on AI in 2015, and people oh. were like what? AI didn't exist in 2015. And I was like, oh no, I assure you it did. Um, at that time it was called Watson and we were playing Watson against listen. Jeopardy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, AI has existed. So I love this because it's kind of like, you know, you hear a lot about startups becoming an overnight success that took them 10 years. It's the mm -hmm. kind of the same thing for artificial intelligence. So I have a a really big love in my heart for AI. I got to work on it at IBM, got to work on it at AWS. Um, mm -hmm. And so I see a huge potential for AI and blockchain, which is what Web3 is built on top of. Mm -hmm. And here's why. Um, I actually just spoke at a CEO conference and mm -hmm. uh, that was an AI focused conference. And you're like, wait, you're Web3. Why are you at an AI conference? <laughs> well, the, the CEOs, the number one problem that they see with AI has to do with ethics and reliable mm -hmm. or resilient AI, right? Where how do I know what I'm hearing and seeing is the truth? Well, that's mm -hmm. where blockchain comes into play. Blockchain is able to provide that trust and that credentialed and verifiable um, pieces, right? So let's imagine, mm -hmm. DJ, remember the uh, the Pope who was in his puffer jacket mm -hmm. and everybody yes. was tweeting it and retweeting it? Yeah. Well, if that had been verified on chain, we could have seen like a little bubble mm -hmm. that came up to say, hey, this is really the Pope's picture versus mm -hmm. we have no idea. And then later, many people were surprised and embarrassed that the picture was mm -hmm. not real, right? And so I think that blockchain really has a big role in identifying deep fakes that exist in artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, one of the biggest issues that exists today in AI. Um, so I believe firmly that AI is going to catapult blockchain. It's going to push it ahead faster than it would have had, had AI really not emerged, if you would, emerged mm -hmm. with a gen AI. I mean, I would think the same as well, because AI and Web3 goes hand in hand in many ways, right? It is definitely going to gonna catapult uh, Web3 uh, and, and 
faster adoption it, it is going to definitely help more and more adoption and and going back to the example that you just referred uh, regarding the pope image so that is that is a, a crazy thing that people tried with ai right and so is there any innovative or interesting ways people tried unstoppable domains or or is there any interesting stories as a builder from your side or as a user from a user's perspective let's say you, you have you have so many domains let's say what 3.9 million domains have you seen anybody do some crazy stuffs uh, be it on social media be it anywhere or or in real life um you know the, i think one of the coolest things we had happen is mm -hmm. um okx which you know is an exchange based in asia mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, they came out with a campaign that they actually took to tv and they did mm -hmm. okx and that was really the wow. first time i think yeah okay. i think that was really the first time anybody had thought about you know, you could do yes. fo.x for Fox. Um, oh. So I thought that was really creative. Yes. We worked with them on that campaign, and I thought that was super yes. creative um, and the way that they pushed that through. I thought that was really uh, ingenious. The other interesting thing that we did that I thought would never happen is we held mm. a Web3 auction. Mm. Um, so we auctioned off domains. So, you know, um, in Austin, Texas at NamesCon, they actually had an auctioneer, you know, he goes 150, 250, blah, 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 that kind of thing. It was super fun auctioning off domains. And in fact, our audience had such a great time with it that we launched mm -hmm. the very first all Web3 auction. First time it was ever done. Wow. Um, nice. And we just did that with a company called Right of the Dot. Monty, who is an OG mm -hmm. in the Web2 domain space, brought his mm -hmm. skill set over and did that auction for us here most recently. And now mm -hmm. our next feat will be we'll be doing a Web2 and Web3 domain auction at the Domain Expo that will happen on December 6th. So those are oh. a couple of the things that I, I didn't think would ever happen um, that have happened now. Oh, nice, nice, interesting. I mean, OKX is one of the major ex exchanges. I mean, if uh, they are definitely among the top three, top three, top four exchanges in the globe, and to, to do a campaign with them, OK.x, it's super cool. Uh, and and I remember seeing a campaign uh, or or a, or a crazy stuff from your team when Twitter rebranded to X. Right, that was one super cool incident that that comes to my mind when even you were talking. So cool. Uh, I mean, auction on one hand, uh, OKX or, or branding with Twitter is on another hand. So let's say uh, for people listening on to this pod, if they want to get associated with unstoppable domains, be it work, be it uh, community or, or any engagements, where can they find unstoppable domains and where can they find you? I mean, I'm, I'm sure most of them already follow you, but it would be better if it comes out from you directly. Yeah, so um, so of course we're unstoppabledomains.com. You can go to unstoppabledomains.com. There are lots of buttons you can push for as a user, as a community member, if you want to become a partner. We are looking for more partners who add value to our users for sure. Um, we also are on Twitter, but we're unstoppable web. So it's kind of a tricky wiki. Mm -hmm. There is an unstoppable domains that is not us, but it's unstoppable web is our Twitter handle. Um, you can find us there as well. Uh, every Friday, we also do a Twitter space. So we'd love to see you there. Mm -hmm. If you want to reach out to mm -hmm. me, I am uh, Sandy underscore Carter on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. Sandy founder underscore Carter on Instagram uh, or mm -hmm. Sandy Carter on uh, LinkedIn. You can find me on just about any platform, Signal or WhatsApp or, you, uh, or Telegram. Mm -hmm. You got it. I'm there for sure. One thing that I can say is you are super active on social media. I mean, one thing that is that is the most needed, uh, especially in these times, right? In in these digital era where everybody works from home, everybody has turned literally to to the screens. And I have seen you personally uh, do it time and again. And how do you find time, Sandy? Because you are so active on at work, which is your first priority, and then you manage your social so well uh, is there any uh, leaf that i can take take out of the hat 
Um, I would say that on Sunday, Sundays is a, are a planning day for me, uh, VJ. Okay. And so I sit down and I plan out like what I want to talk about, what I found was interesting. Um, so for example, yesterday, you know, I found that the French government just made blockchain gaming considered not gambling. They were looking at ruling all blockchain gam all blockchain gaming gambling. Mm -hmm. I thought that was fascinating. So I'm going to tweet that out today. So I read voraciously to keep up with mm -hmm. the industry to really see who I should partner with next, what I should do. Mm -hmm. And I and I really am a big planner. So I try to plan and organize everything out that I can. Plus, you know, VJ, I learn as much from social mm -hmm. as hopefully mm -hmm. I'm sharing. Hopefully I'm contributing to the learning, but mm -hmm. I learn from so many people, right? Like, like watching mm -hmm. a video or seeing a news post that I missed, or, you know, mm -hmm. it's just amazing to see what you can learn from others. And uh, that's kind of the big value I get out of social is all of that learning. So key takeaways, proper planning, and then a lot of information. Trust me, you are adding a lot of value, uh, not just to me, but for the entire community, because I have I've personally seen a lot of your tweets where you uh, have been a torch bearer, where, where even the news media outlets haven't shared that news. I have I've seen such tweets from you. So oh. great to be associated with you in person. One one last question and in this section, and then we go to the rapid rapid fire round. Mm -hmm. So for anybody, for any builder or any founder who is getting into this space and, and a bit skeptical, sketchy on, on how to navigate, how to move things, what would be your yeah. advice to such uh, fellows? I mean, my number one advice actually comes from the biggest learning that I got from Amazon Web Services, which is always work backwards from your customer. Um, mm. You know, frankly, VJ, uh, the technology doesn't matter as much as how you solve the customer's problems. And um, I think there are so many problems that you need Web3, that you need blockchain in order mm. to solve today that I think if you start with where the customer is, uh, where they're going, right? Like Wayne Gretzky said, go to where the puck's going, not where the puck is. Mm -hmm. If you look at that, I think there will be so many use cases and so much mm -hmm. blank space for any entrepreneur to sneak in and build an amazing solution. But always, always, always start with a customer first. That's wonderful. That is most needed because everybody tries to uh, I mean, most of the people tries to force fit, uh, let's say, technologies like AI or blockchain, even before they start, right? They, they get into a shell and then they search for uh, a problem, search for solutions. But rather, they should start from bottom up where they solve a problem. So that's that's a really great tip. Uh, thanks. Thanks again, Standy. So one last section where we have a rapid fire section. OK. So shall we? Shall we? <laughs> First question. What is your favorite city and why? Oh, my favorite city. Wow. See, this is a hard one because my favorite city to live in is Austin, Texas. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Austin, Texas is, you know, great food, great people, uh, relaxed atmosphere, energy, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the energy that you find in Silicon Valley, uh, the energy, the innovation is there. So I love Austin mm -hmm. to live. Wouldn't be my number one city to visit, but it would be my number one city to live in. Okay, great. Good to hear. I have, I have personally been to Austin. I enjoyed the city. I, I could relate to what you say. And uh, who is your biggest inspiration outside of the Web3 space? Outside, outside of this. So it is my grandmother. Um, my grandmother was an amazing woman. Um, mm -hmm. She wasn't, she was four foot eight. So I'm 5'7". She was 4'8". I don't know what that is in meters, but it's small. She mm -hmm. was short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, she was my grandmother. So she grew up in a time when women didn't do many things. Um, she was she played on the basketball team, 4'8", played on the basketball team. Ooh. I mean, that's, yeah. Okay. Um, she, she did so many amazing things up until... Even um, when she got older, she was 90 years old and she was washing people's hair in a retirement community. And she said, yes, Sandy, I got to go help the old people. She was 90. 
Um, oh so God. from the start to the finish, and I have to tell you that she is my inspiration. She actually gave me this necklace, which I wear every day. I never take Ooh. it off. Um, nice. In the center is a stone that represents me. And around the oh. stone are my, my family, my friends. Um, and she said to always use it as a remembrance that it's never just about you. You don't sparkle. You don't shine without your friends and your family, without your tribe there mm -hmm. to support you and to help you. And so um, she is my, um, my biggest inspiration outside of Web3. Wow, that's that's definitely inspirational and, and so touching as well. And uh, oh man, I'm, I'm speechless here. <laughs> so she she doing that stuff at 90 speaks yeah. volume. And then now I, I could see where you got all the energy from, right? <laughs> that's the secret sauce. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So uh, next question is, is what what is your uh, free time activity i mean what would you like to do the most i mean i, I get sundays you you do for planning but what else <laughs> i don't plan all day sunday sunday's my family day too <laughs> so um i'm a i love my children and my family so we do stuff uh, a lot of stuff together mostly mm -hmm. kid stuff right now um personally mm -hmm. i love to swim that's my uh my big exercise right now and uh, I like to write. I'm a big writer. So I actually just published a book um, oh. because I like to write so much. Let me just put, put it up here real quick. Yeah. It's called The Tiger and the Rabbit. Cool. It's a book okay. about um, the metaverse and Web3 and AI. Um, oh. And it's a business fable. Yeah. So I love to write. I write for fun. Um and that's something else that AWS really honed in. And, you know, at AWS, you have to write all these narratives. So yes. um, I just kept writing and writing. And I wanted yeah. to do this to share, hopefully, an easy way to understand our space with the mm -hmm. with the web world out there. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, if, if you mind sharing the link where uh, the audience can find the book, please do share. Uh, we'll have it in the description. And okay. is it is it only available in the U.S. stores or? globally no it's available globally uh it's supposed awesome. to be available everywhere i know that we've had mm -hmm. um we were in singapore it showed up in singapore mm -hmm. we were in paris it showed up in paris mm -hmm. i've had some nice. folks from the middle east uh, text me pictures mm -hmm. of it so i think it's global now cool then definitely we will have uh, the links or, or relevant materials in the description down below in the podcast and with one last question i'll let you go so that will be if not Web3, what would you be doing now? Or which career uh, you might have opted for? Wow, what career would I have opted for? Well, I have to tell you, VJ, I really mm. wanted to be an astronaut. That was like my dream. Um, mm. I actually got to go to like space camp and all that. So I thought I was going to be an astronaut. Uh, the cool thing is that Amazon, I actually helped work on the project to get Rover to Mars. So I kind of considered that my substitute, that I didn't actually get to go. But who knows, right? I mean, look at what Elon Musk is doing, getting yep. people in, in Jeff Bezos. Who knows? Yep. I may still get there. You, know? you never know. Yep, yep, yep. Never know. I mean, world is so small uh, that, that people say, right? I mean, and then... Tomorrow is not the last day, right? We still have a lot more to conquer. And I wish you conquer not just this dream in the future, but a lot more. And I, I really wish you a good luck. And then also for the Unstoppable Domains team who have been crushing it. Me personally, uh, myself and, and my team at Bitscrunch, we look up to guys like you and Unstoppable Domains in this space to grow. And uh, yeah, happy to... Uh, Happy to have hosted you here. So thanks again for joining me, Sandy. It was a pleasure hosting you. My pleasure. Thank you. And then to all the Unstoppable team, the amazing Unstoppable team, uh, thank you because none of this would be possible without all of you. So thank you, guys. And thanks to our users, too, as well as our whales. And VJ, thank you. Big hugs for the partnership with BitCrunch. Yep. Thanks a lot. Take care and uh, hope to see you soon. <laughs>